Yeah. Um, Luke just messaged us both. Um, and it says, uh, it's your friend, his friend's birthday. Luke Paquin? Yeah. It's, it says, um, turned into a deep dive um, today at Dave Vanian's birthday into the world of rock and roll Draculas. <laughs> More of a group text thing than a traditional podcast format, but something perhaps worth exploring on your show. Rock and roll Draculas. Yeah. Like Alice Cooper, I guess. Harry Nilsson. I mean, it's yeah. basically a Hollywood vampires thing. Yeah. They're all... They all have Kiss. dressed as Dracula. Kiss. Eh. Kind of... That's like New World. It's that's like, like they're all like a different kind of mythological beast. Something. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. Happy Thanksgiving. You know, I guess. I used to, you know, when I was a kid, I used to think it was so fucking cool when the way that Rick Danko... When they come out in the last waltz at the start, like for the encore, and he's like, happy Thanksgiving. And then they start. I used to think that shit was the coolest thing in the whole world. And then, like, I tried to channel that energy every show I played, come out and kind of be like, happy Thanksgiving. Like, that kind of thing probably just always sounded like a total loser. I mean, I'm not from here, so originally, I mean, so I didn't, I don't really, it's not a holiday. I, it's not within, you know, the kind of repertoire of British holidays. But it, and the, to me, I that, mean, was an, that was American Thanksgiving. For our American listeners, we should say this is Canadian Thanksgiving. And like which most. Which to you is probably like. Well, like a most joke things holiday. that Canada does, it's just a shittier version of the American one. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. We don't have any actual football games on. Just luck. We're lucky that. American football games are on on that day, but it has nothing to do with the holiday. Here. And the only thing that makes the two things the same is we did the genocide as well as you, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, we share we it. share that we share in that. You know, well, Pilgrim welcome to Gore. another episode of cool stories and music, where we're gonna just go over <laughs> uh, our favorite records, just check out the Wikipedia, and with very little research, just read through what the Wikipedia says. But we have wonderful diction and reading skills and. And I've been using this accent for years to my advantage, and I ain't going to stop now. It makes you sound now. a lot more impressive. And yeah, serious. I spoke to a friend earlier, and he said, I was listening to your podcast, and I was like, I don't think you'll like it, and because it's not really necessarily his alley. He's a younger man than me, and he, he doesn't really like, uh, listen necessarily music. to, no, he likes music, <laughs> just doesn't really listen to this kind of music, maybe, and well, maybe I'm selling him short a bit, but I, I, he said, no, I just, for some reason, it's just soothing listening to your voice, mm-hmm. he said, so... Yeah, I think it's you're lucky because, yeah, or we're lucky to have you because I think you do have quite a nice soothing voice. I mean, my diction. mine's definitely got a bit more of a harsh timbre. I feel like I, I've been I've, I've thought about asking you to EQ some of the highs out of my voice, like the three point three point two range, that kind the of nasal. Thing. Yeah, range. I've noticed. Yeah, it's kind of a jive, more of a Lennony kind of. Lennon on a U forty seven kind of feel. feel. I mean, which yeah. works great when I'm singing, but sure. sometimes when I'm talking, I. So if you could just kind of handle that in a bit of the post production. Yeah, I can fix that in post. Yeah. I'll use um, my um, Pultec EQs, That's my EQP great. one, yeah, three EQPA. I one. really like that kind of thing that you can attenuate the same frequency as you boost. That works. Yeah, well. it's kind of uh, you know, it's a you get a, like a kind of bump. I think is what they call yeah. it. A bump. I could use a bump. That's for sure. Yeah, well, I'm doing the I'm doing the McNulty. We're playing McNulty or and Bunk. Yeah, McNulty or Bunk or Bunk. And I'm we play. I'm this. more Bunk. Alex figured out the other night because the other night when you came over and we drank whiskey and beer all night, and then I felt sick. Th- then we watched, and Bunk's always the one who feels sick. Yeah, he is. So McNul- I'm Bunk. And yeah, you're which McNulty. makes me feel good because I definitely you want to be McNulty. <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> I did, suppose. Do you? I don't know. Banging waitresses like sounds pretty good. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so yesterday we both are feeling pretty weird today so i've got a coffee uh, last time i did this we uh i had a non-alcoholic beer because i hadn't pumped yet yeah and you were you weren't yourself you don't think so no i noticed that like normally when we crack mid-episode which by the way i'm gonna crack like right now yeah you you, you really we really get that Extra, Acceler- acceleration yeah. we need and i not that you i thought you were excellent on the last podcast but i Thanks, did notice Johnny. you didn't you didn't get that boost halfway through i didn't have enough hot takes no just your straight up just your excitement joy because alcohol you know is it's an, kind of like it's an you upper. need it to survive i mean when you drink as much of it yeah no it's true you certainly do. We well no it, it. what it does is it, it expands your consciousness and yes it, it's kind of a like 
it's more of a I'm here and I want to be anywhere but here. I don't mind if I go up or down. I just don't want to be I'm shifting my paradigm, which is kind of a nice segue into the Beatles Rubber Soul. Mm. Because they it's the record it's the beat most Beatlesy of the Beatles records. I think you'd probably agree. You know, I and listened it's because to it the other it's day. when the Beatles became the Beatles. I was listening to it and I definitely thought it had a Beatlesy feel. Yeah, to it has it. a Beatlesy feel. Yeah, it I did. think it has more of a Beatlesy feel than any other Beatles record. Um, I would say how the a Hard Day's Night has a really Beatlesy feel. Yeah, I mean, I. That, it's been a hot sure, you know, right yeah. off the top. But, like, okay, then if I that, got a whole lot of things to die. It's it's the um, whole thing is Beatles this, Beatles that. Certainly, but also, it's the moment they be okay. So if Hard Day's Night is the most Beatlesy of mm-hmm. the records, mm-hmm. Rubber Soul is the record that they became the Beatles on. Well, that I'll give you that. Yeah, in 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 their full. The full Beatles spectrum. Yeah. It's like the clothes, the, the production. Yeah. The, Fur coats. Here yeah, we go. Everything. You know. Yeah. Glasses. And they don't Sitars. even. Sitars. Yeah, like wearing glasses when they don't even need glasses to read. Like that kind no. of stuff. You know how and Paul it, would just like in photos have like cool like reading glasses on? But yeah. And you also glasses. said he wore nice uh, wristwatch. Yeah. Yeah. They always have a nice, nice thin band black. Spencer has one. Certainly. For that really. My my nephew Possibly Spencer, for that uh, who's in the room here, not mic'd up. No. Um, I'll tell you something about Rubber Soul. I'm going to get straight to it here. Sure. <clears throat> I think my problem with it is like the stereo mix of it. We're right away getting into nerdy dad territory here. <laughs> like the person I never wanted to become. The stereo mix is kind of scandalizing to me. Like it's it's like it, it's hard to listen to. It doesn't sound like a band. Like, well, you know, I mean, I would go, you know, one further and say, I mean, I would only listen to the original UK mono. So I put on the mono today. Thought it was far better. Yeah, I did. Those things were mixed for mono only. The yes. stereo things were an afterthought. That's mm-hmm. a kind of. Alan Parsons, T boy. We need someone to quickly throw together a stereo mix. Go in a little cubicle at Abbey Road sure. and make the biggest decisions in rock history. Yeah. That we all like now think it was like Paul's idea to the like put all the vocals yeah. on the left side. Yeah. And I just think it, it in particular on Abbey Road, it's strange. Or sorry, rubber soul. Um just wait for the coffee and the <laughs> the champagne. What of are we talking beers. about here? Rubber Soul. No, I know. I know. It's oh, particularly I know you know. odd oh, I know in that young, one, young man. Because Revolver, like the thing about the thing about it is, is I always paired Rubber Soul and Revolver together. Sure. Because I made a tape when I was a kid. Rubber Soul. I, side I a. would. I do the same thing. I think about them in the same way. I think. And yeah. Revolver to me just rocks so much harder, and I think it has to do with the mix, like. Like it's yeah. just right off the top, Taxman. The bass and drums are up the middle. It's like what about Drive My Car? Drive My Car. It's all hard pay. I can't feel it in mono though. It felt like a Motown song. Well, something. you know that's interesting. You bring up Motown because there certainly is a. That's the the name of the record itself is kind of a play on the idea that they were a plastic version of soul music. Right. And like they were certainly heavily influenced by Motown. You get a big percussion elements in it, like the tambourine stuff. Definitely. I thought that they really started to get creative with percussion on Mm -hmm. Rubber Soul. And that's one of my favorite things about the album. Yeah. For sure. Some really weird shaker and tambourine decisions, like just rhythmically that are really, really groovy to, for lack of a better word. I was reading um, about... I read this thing. <laughs> Let me just pull this up here. I was reading. No, that's. I'm still binge. Wait, it's Wiki, W-I-K-I. Yeah. Wiki, Wiki what? <laughs> What's the band called again? The Beatles. The Beatles, right. Okay. Let me just look it up. I was reading about. Uh, I, <laughs> I'm just going to. I'm going to pull it up. These people are going to have to. These people are going to have to wait. Luke. Speaking of our friend Luke. He made a joke one time that I thought was the best joke I've ever heard, and I can't really do it justice, but it was about, he knows tons about music, and it was about two in the morning, and we were all kind of sitting around, talking, drinking beers, and talk. the Beatles came up, and I was just like talking about his song, and he just looked at me super, with so much sincerity, he was just like, Beatles are good? 
Classy. <laughs> like, but it was just... Classy. It was really classy. He, but, you know, with all the knowledge that he's listened to them a million times and, and he's aware of how ridiculous it is to even talk about them. Yeah. But then just being like, oh, they're good. Like, I'll check them out kind of thing. But the way he did it, man. Well, he's a funny guy. Yeah. If only he could figure out how to use a microphone, we could have him on every week. <laughs> um... <laughs> So this is a Rolling Stone article about uh, the 50th anniversary of Rubber Soul. Okay. And there's some real interesting takes in it, mm. such as, in addition to everything else it is, Rubber Soul is their best sung album. <laughs> what do you think about that? I think that's the most ridiculous fucking thing I've ever heard. You can have a great time just focusing on the background vocals, it says. Actually, I did have a good time focusing on the background vocals earlier today. Here's another hot take, which I actually think I really like. Um, it will always be my favorite Beatles record, even if Revolver is actually better. <laughs> Who He's said made, that? I don't know, some fucking guy. And that's this is good. It, if there's a theme... Okay, actually, let's let's <laughs> let's turn this back. This guy says that this theme, uh, this said theme that I won't say, and we're gonna kind of you know, see if we get to it, is the most Beatlesque of emotions. <laughs> what do you think, Johnny? Is the most Beatlesque of emotions? Uh, I don't know. I really don't. Oh, the most Beatlesque of emotions. Mm. I honestly couldn't tell Curiosity. you. Curiosity. <laughs> this fucking guy man and I think this is really interesting because he goes on to talk about <laughs> it's a curiosity of women oh the most Beatlesque of mysteries to be curious about I don't think there's anything mysterious about it on that record dude it's, there's a lot of toxic masculinity every song is like record. about John trying to choke out his wife yeah at literally every song <laughs> yeah. you better run for your life if you can little girl got you with another he's man he's got a real That's kind of the boots end. to the throat kind of approach to uh, relationships yeah which uh, <clears throat> you know is why he was only that was only cured through like scream therapy and hypnotism from Yoko it's right. pretty, yeah. Well, no, he did. Yeah, she she hypnotized. I read May Pang's book. Yeah, yeah. John was the kind of guy, you know, big fan, big fan of his music. But uh, he was the kind of guy when everybody's sitting around having a few drinks, you know, one person would kind of, you know, maybe ha they have to go be sick. The other person would kind of be getting drunk, and John would head straight for his girlfriend and just grab her around the throat and kind of toss her around the room. Yeah, you know, and that's. Uh you can't do that anymore, Johnny. Yeah. You I, can't do that anymore. I, <laughs> Imagine being, living in a time where like, just being in a band got you laid. Like, you know, like, it's just like, yeah, I'm in a band. It's like, that's like groupies and stuff. Like, it's the most embarrassing thing to say you're part of now. Like, it wouldn't, it would never work. You I, know, just I, existing I, in a time when that was like a good thing. Well, it's crazy. And uh, honestly, like, I, I laugh when I'm saying that about John, but I should say, like, I laugh about stuff like that because I think it's so crazy that people just accept it and that it, it I don't know, it's bizarre to me that, that that stuff happened and nobody really talks about it, you know? And it's just... I mean, this article goes on to talk about this shit's wild. Um, Rubber Soul has the coolest girls on it of any Beatles record. Girl, I'm looking through you. If I needed someone, these are complex and baffling females, much like the ones the Beatles ended up with in real life. No happy romantic endings here, but even when the even <laughs> with the notable exception of In My Life. In My Life He's singing is, about his dad. In uh, my, that's totally not true. He's singing about his dad, isn't he? No. Who's he singing about? I think In My Life is the most perfect love song ever written. About your dad? No, just about a boy. It's about a woman. I think it's about his dad. I know it's not. And it's famously about his dad and no. the rejection of his father and his parental figures. Of all these friends and lovers, there's no one compares with you and these memories lose their meaning when I think of love as something new. It's he's about meeting a woman and he's fallen so hard in love with her. That's what it's about. It's the most pure and just so it's joyous. It's not about his dad? No. I thought, it was about, I thought it was about his parental, you know, it was a kind of like Oedipal story about his, the rejection from his, 
his you know bootlicker dad who you know military dad or whatever is you know angry I, I, man. I've never heard that and, and what I've he never did interpreted to, his, the to song. Julian. I've never interpreted the song that way. I always thought it was pure pop masterwork that. I could write a whole essay about that song and why it's the most perfect pop song. You know the harpsichord is just a piano sped up. It's George Martin playing it too. Yeah, yeah. I, right off the top from the opening guitar riff that is so recognizable to every single melodic turnaround. Very John, Motown-y guitar line that yeah, too. Yeah, and, and John's melody is like impeccable. Like you couldn't write it. No other melody would fit in it as perfectly. And it just, it takes you, the lyrics are heartbreakingly beautiful and it takes you all the way to the end when he goes up to that falsetto on the minor. It's like... Ext- Very Beach boys It's better than A Day in a Life. Like I think it's his finest song he ever wrote. I really do. Is it as good as... Imagine. Yes, I think it's better. And I'll tell you what else. The worst song you ever wrote is "Run for Your Life." <laughs> and they're on the zero. Girl. Oh, what about "Girl"? Love "Girl." Great what about song. the kind of a klezmer feel? What it definitely has a klezmer vibe for sure. <laughs> they do a bit of klezmer. But Alex, what about Alex the, was like, "What is this? It's almost like a kind of a traveling salesman sort of medicine yeah, show, kind of Eastern European feel. kind of bar talk yeah. kind of vibe." Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Which he also does on "Being for the Benefit of Mr. Kite." Yeah, I mean, it's just they were musical. Um, you know, journeyman. You know, they go all around picking up the best things they could. You know, it's you know, it's George Harrison's favorite Beatles record. <laughs> I read that. I'll tell you, I learned a long on time Wikipedia. ago. You never trust the artists on what their favorite album is because it's always a weird decision. Yes, I would this talk. guy continues. Except in this. Page and okay. Plant. I okay. always agreed. They like one Zeppelin one and yeah. Physical Graffiti were their two favorites, and the same with me. Interesting. I mean. My favorite would be presents, but Get that's just a hot down. take. You Get know what I mean? Down. And you can like learn a lot of those kind of takes on this. If, if there's one thing that we do, on you know, we can give you yeah. the keys to like um, interesting takes that might make you seem more interesting to people, such as saying your favorite Led Zeppelin records are one and physical. These graffiti. are things. These are ways to like you know gateways to success. They're also gateways. To pussy. Because if I know one thing as an experienced man, women love listening to guys talk for hours about the intricacies of like, I don't know which member of Crosby Stills, Nash and Young has the best guitar tone. 100% true. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you don't like music, it's worth listening to this podcast for that reason alone. Just just to get kind of tips. You know, you say things like, I don't know, when you're kind of in a room, there's another guy there, you both like the same girl, and you're talking about Dylan, for example. Did you, you know, know that was a 12-string guitar? Yeah. On- or even like, um, yeah, honestly, I'm more of a kind of Christian era Dylan. You know, set yourself apart. Mm-hmm. You know, infidels. Blood on tracks, don't really care. And then he'll counter with you. He'll be like, oh, yeah, you mean sparring. like infidels? And you'll be like, no, no, I prefer slow train coming because of Mark Knopfler's production quality on it. Yeah. And, like, and then that's when you'll get the girl's attention. She'll look over yeah. and kind of be like, well, this guy. And no one's even listened with. to those records. So it doesn't really matter. Exactly. No that's one's going to test you That's what's impressive That's what's impressive about, about it. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like, you know, we're talking about rubber People soul. think, oh, you find all this, get all this minute knowledge about records. What's the point? That's why. Well, you know, yeah. That's why we do it. That's, that's why everybody does that's it. That's the only reason to do it. Yeah. And there's nothing, you know, for example, like you, this rubber soul, we're talking about it, but those in the know, you know, if we're talking about these records... <laughs> You just say something like, honestly, I think, like, I, I don't really listen to the Beatles after Hard Day's Night, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. that's the real Beatles. Mm-hmm. That's where the optimism lies for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, and, and it's I would tune in for that. I mean, I could give you another vote. Like, w- exactly. Say things like, I don't like Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. I think it's a bad song. Interesting. It's- I don't even, I, I don't like the Beatles. Yeah. I Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I'm more of a Woody Guthrie guy. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, they exactly. You know. People really respect those opinions. Yeah, people respect those opinions and the people who say those kind of things. Yeah, you know, because it seems like you have something to offer. You're different. You're yeah, unique. A little bit different. You're yeah. a thinker, an intellectual, an intellectual, an aficionado. You don't ex- aficionado exactly. Aficionado yeah, exactly. feel. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, the Beatles. <laughs> yeah, Beatles. yeah. I'm more of a 
um, pretty things guy. Yeah, <laughs> you know exactly. Do you yeah. you heard parachutes? Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah you exactly. like I'm no uh, it's more of a Sergeant Pepper is mm. pretty good. SF Sorrow. Did you actually yeah, know SF Sorrow is like actually yeah. the original concept record? So mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. interesting that you like Sergeant Pepper's because I'm more of an SF Sorrow guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, of course, there's uh, Village Green too. Mm-hmm. You know, which is another kind of one that I prefer. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Pet Sounds. Yeah, you know, God only knows is good, but I prefer Smile as it would have been. Which I've compiled my own version, version of, of yeah. it through uh, only on LP and yeah. had it pressed actually. Yeah, exactly. For myself, and it's kind of among certain circles, it's regarded as the official track listing. Yeah, my Although, version yeah, that yeah, I put together. My version, yeah, of from it. like Smiley Smile yeah, Twenty. I did. Yeah. yeah, I've researched it. And, yeah, um, Heroes and a villains. lot of people think that Cabin Essence should be track four, but I believe that Wonderful should come before it and I think that's what Brian would have wanted. Rubber so. Soul, I'll tell you something interesting. I actually prefer the the East Coast mix. I don't know if you've heard that, but mm. it's um a version that was mixed and given an extra reverb and echo treatment. And there mm. are copies of this on vinyl that exist that it was like pressed in a different plant where they did a kind of mastering job. Mm-hmm. This is real now, I'm telling you. A real thing. And I really want to hear it. There's like a version of it that apparently exists. I'm sure it's on the internet. That is just, it's called like the East Coast Mix. It's kind of an ocean wave feel. They used reverb chambers. <laughs> so to, you're telling me somebody took rubber sole yeah. and added some fucking reverb yeah. and this is like a famous yeah. bootleg? It's wow. not even a bootleg. It's It was like out at the time. It was like wow. someone did it. I, I've got a little note about it here. Hang on. Listen to this. The East Coast Mix. Most copies of Rubber Soul were pressed in Los Angeles, but a small number were pressed in New York and were mastered differently. These versions featured dexterization of the masters, named for the Capitol Records executive Dave Dexter Jr. What a cokehead. Imagine this. Like He's like, give me the records. I've got my own. I've got my own like little, little synergistic moment. <laughs> to keep all my Capitol Records stuff sounding the same, who modified many early Beatles records by compressing the sound and adding reverb. This version of Rubber Soul is commonly referred to as the East Coast Mix and only applies to stereo masters. So yeah, this thing exists. And there's a way to... East Coast of m- what? England? No, it'd be the New York. East Coast oh. Mix. East Coast well, Mix. I, I, I mean, I don't even like the US pressing of the album. Yeah. Why the hell are there songs from Help on Rubber Soul when they put it out in America? What's the well, deal? Because like Help seen didn't have face. Help is different too. Yeah, and they butchered Rubber Soul in the states. Yeah, they butchered it. Yeah, it's completely different. I've just seen a face first track. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Really weird. Yeah, I don't know. But then you see some people who are like the one-two punch of I've seen a face and Norwegian Wood. Give me a break. You know. You see that. Mm-hmm. I've seen it. I've heard it. McCartney, I, I will agree with you that what you said about how it's John's LP it's John's, is totally it's John's true. Album. Paul's like pretty weak on it. I yeah. think that's part of the reason I like, because Paul, another hot take here. Paul's my favorite Beatle. <clears throat> see, the hot take, and, if you, the, the hot take that people would counter with there is it's when people say, George. It's oh, my yeah, favorite exactly. Beatle, which well, is a non and it's not allowed. You can't say no. that, but people that's the contrarian. That is position. that's the like I like Woody Guthrie more than Bob Dylan. Yeah, opinion. the contrarian yeah. position is I like George. George is George my favorite. Is, writes all the best songs. Yeah, three songs in his career. But I do <laughs> most famous song from the eighties is a cover, of an Eddie Cochran cover or something. Yeah, it yeah. got my mind set on you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's completely like pulling. I'm the actually wool, more of an Eddie Cochran pulling guy. the wool over the eyes of every. Yeah, Fair. never said it. You know when people do covers and they don't really say it's a cover? Yeah. Kind of like Clapton's the most famous for that. Yeah. Just did J.J. Kale songs and didn't tell anyone. Uh-huh. Cocaine is Yeah. Not. Well, cocaine. Just I mean. did cocaine. Just did cocaine. Clapton, Clapton yeah. just did cocaine. Oh, no, the song is... No, he did cocaine. Yeah, he did cocaine. Yeah, and the song... He has a song... The song, you mean? No, he did cocaine. Oh, Like yeah. a lot of cocaine. But then he did cocaine. Yeah. Do you remember when we played it? Like a 25-minute version of it? <laughs> yeah. we Penticton? I used to do it a lot with, yeah. the, with, the, with the band. We thought it was hilarious. Well, Probably. I mean, it was, you know, to be young, you know? Yeah. Um, but you know what? Uh, yeah. Or like, you know, something like Whitney Houston, Greatest Love of All. Like, I'm sure everybody thought she wrote that. But Interesting. You mean, George I Will Always Benson. Love You? No, greatest love of all. Oh. I believe the children are our future. Oh, did she do that song? Yeah, she had a massive hit with it. 
What about the Bodyguard one? I Will Always Love You, written yeah. by Dolly Parton. Yeah, yeah. It's a Dolly But song. more people know that. That's one of the ones that people like... No. I think Dolly probably put the word out after that. She must have made a pretty penny on that. What about um, Bad Finger? Like, Without You. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, big that's a one. good example. That's a good one. A good, People, I was I was reading. I have this Nilsson book, and I was reading about that the other day. It was awesome. Like that, he almost didn't want to do a version of it, and he did a demo. And the the producer Richard Perry had the foresight. The foresight that he was like Nilsson was like, I'll just put the demo out. Like it's good, sure. and he was like, No, no, no. We have to make a track here, and they made it. They recorded it, and <laughs> it's great classic stories like. So the story goes, they were cutting the record, doing some overdubs, yeah. and Badfinger yeah. were at a studio in the building. Nice. And Richard Perry went and got them and brought them in and put Without You on full volume. And by all accounts, Pete Ham and the other guy were speechless. The other dead one. Yeah. Were, they were speechless. Speechless. And it, of course, they went number no one in the US and the UK, became Nilsson's yeah. biggest hit. Yeah. Cover. Cover. He, was, he always hated that, that he... he all his biggest hits were covers. Everybody's talking. Yeah. And he he fancied himself a songwriter, you know, kind of like George Harrison. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, I will s- what about the Trogs? Love is all around me. <laughs> I like the Trogs. That's I'm a, I'm another a one that got, it's written in the wind. I mean, kind of the original Rubber Soul is the Trogs. Um, <laughs> I can't even think of it. <laughs> I think, well, you know what, actually, though, what about this? I I was listening to obviously like it's really really Im- like famously it's like a Dil- it's really a Dylan record heavily inspired by Dylan yes you know you can hear the bird you were talking about the birds well the birds so I looked it up so Mr Tambourine Man the record came out in June sixty five okay this came out in December sixty five and I think it's interesting because who is doing who there. And and they're all doing Dylan. So is that just what electric music was going to sound like influenced by Dylan either way? Yeah, I think so. Which is really interesting. It, it, has, it, it has really like is. what we would say is like a, a West Coast feel. Well, per, per, particularly Nowhere Man has yeah. that feel. Yeah. That it like could be a bird song. Yeah, kind totally. Of. Like it really has that turn, 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 yeah, three-part t- harmony yeah. all the way through. Yeah. I actually listened to Mr. Tambourine Man after listening to Rubber Soul. I was actually thinking it's so funny, man. Like, you know, like you listen to those records and like they have like, they're like good because they're shit. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, it's like, a, it's the so, like Mr. Tambourine Man, that record is like so optimistic. It's like this band in a studio, they're like kind of as, they're, they're just good enough to record, just good enough. And they're figuring it out. And then like the outtakes, they'll be like, jam 69 or something I, I, jam number seven and it'll yeah. just be like a blues jam in a but with like delay and reverb i mean and it's, it rules the genius of that stuff though is that do you know who the band is on mr tambourine man go for it the wrecking crew mm-hmm. the birds don't play on it singing. and the genius of that is those are the best musicians in la know, did not making know that. it sound i did bad. not know that i did they're playing that. To is that make, Carol Kay on there? Yeah. They're playing to make it sound like a shitty, like, like stoner rock band from LA. That's how good they were. Like, they could do that. Like, kind of akin to Carol King writing Wasn't Born to Follow. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Like, yeah. I'll, well, imitation. I'll, yeah, I'll just write the, a hippie anthem. Yeah. Like, the, maybe. The hippie the anthem. Hip- I mean, it's the, pretty sad to me. That is it the, the hippie anthem? I wasn't born to follow. I mean, it's one of them. I mean, born to be wild, Steppenwolf. Same soundtrack, maybe. Uh, Are they on the Easy, easy Rider? Yeah, both I think on Easy Rider. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's so it's kind of like pathetic to me that Notorious Bird Brothers' great record that the two best songs on it were written by Carole King. Yeah, I know. Like by far the best songs. Yeah, yeah. Going back. Going, and, well, they're the only ones that have any kind of real depth of emotion yeah. other than triad which they left off it which you know if you want to talk about i was wondering if he's i thought it'd be really funny to like because you can just talk to david crosby on twitter to ask him if it was about two guys and a girl or two girls and him <laughs> that would be great please yeah write like it. because please ask see him. how free his mind is you know oh, what it's I mean? not it's yeah. definitely not he's like a He's a total, uh, you know. Well, he's not he's a Hollywood a Republican, pig. but he's 
he's like a he's a he's a very basic yeah you know boomer person you know really <clears throat> you know the thing but about- i was reading about uh, the doom tour I'm obsessed with it, man. I know it's like we should do like we a, can't get into this. Right no, now, we don't right? have to, but we could. You know, like I was reading about it because it's like it's to me. It's just just the excess is insane. And after we were do, doing that stuff about Stephen Stills last week, and it's like reading some of the shit that they got up to, like playing a show in a stadium, like just trying out new songs, and then like there's that Graham Nash being like, "Yeah, we're all on so much coke." That like, but we're obsessed with the Nixon Watergate trial, like so no, we would just get like they, fired it, up on coke. It was and, so easy to put that together. He doesn't actually yeah. say we were doing coke and watching the Watergate no. trial, yeah, yeah. but it's pretty easy yeah. to like put that together. That he's just like, you know yeah. what? I was really interested uh, in the Watergate yeah. uh, trial hearings. Yeah, uh, for, and it's like instantly you get a mental picture of him sitting in his room just, doing rails of coke and yeah. watching the trial. Well, he explains, he talks about going, like, bump, like, going through, seeing David Crosby getting blown by two girls whilst watching three screens of the Watergate trial. Well, that just answered your question about triad, didn't it? You know, only in that particular circumstance. Right. I I got a bit of a segue here. uh, Yeah. Uh, rubber what soul about, segue because okay. I was thinking I was I I'm fired a, up man I I'm, want to talk about Alex Chilton being obsessed with the OJ trial shit like that now <laughs> well no go on yeah. poor Alex yeah, he yeah. he really had lost it by the early 90s yeah um but uh, no 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 I was thinking that rubber soul was say what you will about George Harrison uh it was his awakening as a Certainly. songwriter. Yeah. Because the two songs if on I there are both great. Gorgeous. And Think for Yourself is a very cool yeah. song, too. Mm-hmm. And his Eastern influence shines through right away on yeah. this song. Sonically, it's there yeah. for the first time. And his guitar playing really takes a step up. And I got a hot take for you here. The guitar solo on Michelle is a rolled off tone. Still Still stole his style from George on Michelle. Really, you think so? Yes. If you listen to it, I feel like there's some. You'd, when's Buffalo Springfield? I feel like you would. He hit. doesn't do that type of soloing in Buffalo Springfield. So you that think comes he listen, You know, ship. Michelle's the most covered song ever. Yeah. In the history of songs. You know, it's funny you say it came out in December because my birthday, mom always but, told me the story yeah. that when she in 1965 she had just come from Cuba. Yeah. And she remembers it so well because. Um, she turned on the radio when she got... They had U, United States radio from Cuba, yeah. and it was that Christmas. Mm-hmm. And every single day, it's just so crazy to think how big they are. People would call in and they'd say, what do you want for Christmas this year? And they'd say, Michelle by the Beatles, Rubber Soul by the Beatles, Michelle by the Beatles, crazy. Michelle. Like, that yeah, was yeah, the yeah. track on it. Yeah. That, yeah. Was, that was the big so song. So then, like, McCartney out Lennon's... Lennon, which because we've said before, like normally Lennon will have like less input, but will have the money shot. Yeah, Le- you know? yeah. I mean, to me, the money shot is in my life, but as far as like success in my life's one of the best Beatles songs. Yeah, I think yeah. it is the best, but especially given the sort of family dynamic of the song the and the crossover. lyrics. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't know anything about that. The you say he's in love with his dad and, or no, something. No, he's reje- it, 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 talking about the rejection kind of, uh, he feels. Yeah. yeah, I don't think so. Oedipal. <clears throat> it's an Oedipal Oedipus kind of energy. complex, yeah. It's an Oedipus kind of complex. Right. Yeah, it's complex. But, but no, in my life, yeah. it's like, I don't want to harp on about this, but, you know, it's the transition you talk about from early Beatles to late Beatles. You hear it in that song. In control of the recording process, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. for the first time. That's where time. George Martin kind of says, I, Guys, I, I took a step yeah. back. Cruise control. They started producing their own albums. You could say they were at cruising altitude. I could say autopilot. They kind of just set it to autopilot. Kind of cruising that altitude. Yeah. Set it to autopilot. The rest is Set it happen. and forget yeah. it. Exactly. Even. Yeah. Maybe. But there is a long... Dude, Revolver fucking destroys Rubber 100%, 100%. Soul. 100%. You, like, there's zero... There's no, I'm not even... So, I'm there's only nothing sleeping to here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Tomorrow never knows. Like, got to get you into my life. Like, these songs are Dr. fucking Robert. monsters. <laughs> <laughs> and he's down. And he's down. That one got him off his chair, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Dr. Robert. <laughs> you know this... I'll tell you right now, I don't like Eleanor Rigby. I like the version of it you can get on YouTube it's where it's just all the same note the whole time. <laughs> That's a good 
good version sometimes of it. paul is too paul he's a nonce for yeah. sure sometimes we know he's a nonce we were listening to uh, nowhere man at the yeah. end the harmony at the end when he's like you know he's feeling himself he's like john i've got got a bit of an idea let me go into the booth and do yeah. it making all his nowhere plans for nobody 100 <laughs> percent. way louder yeah. than the lead vocal. Turn, you can turn that up yeah you can turn that up it sounds so good you can turn it up if you like yeah if you like yeah. Yeah. best drummer in the world yeah. he's not even the best drummer in the beatles Ringo, a bit of a little song. bit of a cameo on Rubber Soul too. <laughs> he, wrote, he, wrote, yeah, he, wrote he wrote a tune. <laughs> don't pass me by, don't make me blue. I like "Don't Pass Me By." Yeah, it's a good on tune. The White Album. Yeah. What, 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 Isn't what? your favorite Beatles song a Ringo song off Sgt. <laughs> Pepper's? Fuck off. He doesn't write. I get but by John wrote with a little it. help from my friends. Yeah, but John yeah. wrote it. You know, Beautiful Liverpool's song. in lockdown right now. Can I just say one thing? You certainly can. I was on Google the other day. Can't, You'll I've love often this. been You'll on Google. I'm more of a duck, duck, go guy. Take. But you know when you can type things, I've done that, and it, it'll answer. Oh, like, I've been like, there. You can find the question. The question I tell you, it was like, who is? It was something about the Beatles, and it, it, the question came up. Someone has asked, who is the best guitar player in the Beatles? And the Google answer is Paul. Interesting. And I love how like they've just they'll ju- they're just telling people. Yeah. That how do they know this information? <laughs> but they're just like Paul. Well, who is the best guitarist in the Beatles? This is the George. kind of shit that girls love to listen to guys talk about. <laughs> just hours and hours of who. Let's really do it. Who's the best guitarist? They. You know what? This ends it's in obvious. It, you know, it culminates in. The fucking the last, end. the end. They call me. They all take a solo. Duel. They duel, dude. Yeah. They George duel. is by far the best in that duel. He's got both what they both have. He's got the edginess of John, and he's got the mel- the melodies the, and the mystical. Paul is kind just of... like straight. He stills. Paul plays. No, guitar. he's a bit of a more of a Neil Young energy. I think. No, Paul. Tax man solo. Very Neil Young feel. Yeah, but he's yeah, but no, but that's a stills feel too, like Bluebird. You know, like that kind of sure, yeah. Like, like it's. What about the C? There's a lot of cross pollination. Paul happening doesn't here. have a like a signature sound on the on the lead guitar to me. He, a bit, okay. He Paul is a wonderful acoustic guitar player. I heard he needed a P bass to really fulfill his potential. In 1974, yeah, he hadn't realized that he'd been limited. Yeah. And of course, if you list, well, if you li- if you've read, Thank God Rick- that Stephen yeah. Stills kind of loved him out of that one by buying him a P bass, because Lord knows the Beatles didn't even know what Fender instruments were. They were. This is a known thing. This is it's known. For it's sure. known that they, unfortunately, being from Europe, yeah, they were only Everybody allowed to this. use these sort of antiquated so true. European so true. European instruments European centric microphones instruments because of tra- it's limited. a trade kind of embargo thing it's an These embargo Gibson thing. Fender they weren't allowed to Marshall yeah Vox, uh, none of, Vox. None, and it, well Vox is German isn't it I think Vox is British. Oh, so they had Vox. Yeah, they had they Vox. They had Vox, but yeah. no Fender Gibson. They didn't know what any of this They stuff weren't was. allowed any of that stuff. And finally, in 1974, an angel came down in the form of Stephen Stills yeah. and to buy Paul McCartney a Fender Angel dust. And he said, he said, what is this? You know, yeah, what, never seen it? it. Don't old basses I, look like, look like violins, violins? Don't, don't they? they all look don't like don't violins? violins? Don't they all look like that, don't <laughs> they? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I believe they do. He didn't know. Best drummer yeah. in the world. Yeah, and then lo and behold, Stephen Stills will will definitely attest to this. Just in time for speed Just of sound. Just in, in time for the band on the run, yeah. uh, all the greatest yeah, wings yeah. material. That's when yeah. his career... It's big. He actually wrote uh, The Girl Is Mine for Michael Jackson on the Fender P bass. Though. Everybody's. That's so true. Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. so true. Mm-hmm. Ebony and Ivory. Mm-hmm. All the good stuff, really. Yeah. All the like, all um, his best songs. Red the Rose, Girl is Mine, Speedway, Ebony and Ivory, Silly Love songs. All his best. The Christmas shit as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. The yeah. Christmas stuff is simply having a wonderful Christmas Which time. Which accounts for 90% of his royalties to this day. It's the most played song he wrote. Oh my God. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's pretty much. Wrote it in five but there is a lot of cross pollination because if you listen, tons of up and down and all around. You know, if you listen to yeah, different the birds, things take place. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. different approaches, different perspectives, but yeah. very much like the 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 cowboy country kind of birdsy thing. Yeah. that's to come. What about 
Um, I wrote it down because I was thinking about it. I honestly, the funniest thing could be the fact that I've had a busy week. I couldn't get rubber soul. It's like you had a Jedi mind trick in my mind. It couldn't stay in my mind. But so I had to write That's down things. Because it sucks, dude. Okay, what about this for cross pollination? <laughs> I don't want to spoil the party from the Beatles for sale. Yeah. Proto cowboy country. Well, Beatles for Sale is the first country rock album. Right. In my opinion. This mm-hmm. is not a... Uh, I've, I believe this, and many have talked about this. I, Babies in Black. Yeah. These are country rock songs. Like, the twang of it. Sure. I think Beatles for Sale, far and away a better album than Rubber Soul. And that's, Love it. Yeah, and that's the kind of thing you, you say to get... To get girls. Yeah. yeah. They love it. Mm-hmm. They, they, it's true. Okay. Well, I was thinking that it's interesting because, like, that is 64, right? Yeah. So, it's kind of a fall record. I like the cover. Autumn it's feel. It's actually kind of a Beatlesy day today. It is Beatlesy, yeah. Outside, kind of yeah. a Beatlesy day. You know what? I don't like this snare sound on Rubber Soul. Like Interesting. It's one thing after another with that album for me. The snare is tuned too high. You don't like that. That's kind of a Motown thing. Yeah, but it doesn't work for Beatles for me. Once they got that really warm, 70s kind of, a black sound, beauty kind yeah, of. Yeah, on like, you know, here, there, and everywhere, sure. that, that kind of thing. The only song John Lennon ever told Paul McCartney was, a, was, <laughs> what a piece was of good shit, that eh? he wrote. What a piece of shit. It's all right. That one's all right. That one's all right. That one's <laughs> all right, isn't it? Jealous fucker, he's hey? from Birmingham now. Yeah. Yeah. My name's John Lennon and I'm from Birmingham for some reason because uh, James Do doesn't know how like, to do his accent that he will. They all look like violins. Yeah. <laughs> He's Dick Van Dyke now. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> clean your chimney, can yeah. I there, please? They all look, look like, like violins. violins. <laughs> I've written a couple of songs. <laughs> clean your Go chimney. get round the studio soon, do yeah. they? Well, they actually did record in London, so it's possible that they're... His accent changed during for the recordings. Yeah. Yeah, no, they got a better drum sound. For sure. And the, that's probably down to like changing from what, like a supersonic to a black beauty, something like that. Or just like putting another mic on the drums or something. Like, yeah. That, that's they, what I read well about. They, yeah. Like maybe it's an eight track yeah. recording. <clears throat> no, but the sound, it, it, I don't like the high. It works on some of the earlier records that are really rock and roll and everything's really, but as soon as you isolate it with that stereo mix, you really hear, I, it's a personal thing. I know a lot of people like that kind of snare. I don't like it. Why the hell did they take Drive My Car off the American version? Well, I kind of have an answer for it. My assumption, uh, and and from my insider research, is that they were trying to make the record even more like a Dylan record. Really cash in on the folk. Not the band themselves, but the label, EMI. It's EMI, right? In America? Capital. Capital in America. Kind of Capital Chambers Ocean Way kind of feel. Kind of a well, yeah. Capital Records, uh, certainly. Capital Records Vault. Who else was on Capital? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Beach Boys. Beachy. They're trying um, to make. They're using. They're trying to make it more like because they completely. It is a it. folk rock record. Yeah. Well, okay. No, Beatles the American one is, is ca- the American one is a folk rock record. Yeah. The the UK Rubber Soul, it's a rock and roll record. I mean, I think you could argue that Revolver is the most Beatlesy record because it's not country rock, it's not folk rock. All of a sudden, it's Beatles. Well, what about it's, Hard Days Night? You said Hard Days Night. Yeah, but now I'm like thinking that like Beatles is actually we're gonna do whatever the fuck we want. Like that's a Beatlesy record. Is like well, we're gonna the have White a second. Album. Yeah, but it starts with Revolver. It's like we're okay. gonna have a kind of country feel, or I don't know if any have a country feel on that. On it's, Revolver, it's rock and roll. It's jazz, Sitari. Got, it's Indian. Yeah, it's, it's mystical. It's got I got got to get you in my life. It's got psychedelic rock. It's that's the, the one where they're like, we have no rules. We're the Beatles. But they became the Beatles on yeah. Rubber Soul. Yeah, or maybe on like White Album is the one where they. They take that confidence and they're like, we literally can just put out the most arty product and it's going to be number one everywhere. And it's their biggest selling record. Yeah, and it's absolutely a perfect, just artistic artifact. And it's a goddamn mess. Yeah, but well, now you're going to give me... Oh, another hot take, uh, everybody. It's a goddamn mess. If you're looking to impress uh, somebody... Tell them about how you think the White Album will be better as a single album. Nice. And then tell them your version. track listing, yeah. your, your version, version, what you it. would omit. Women love this. And you can talk about this stuff. It's Also, it works really well if there's just like a lot of guys in a room talking about it. Mm-hmm. and just Because they'll just listen. They'll just listen to you and uh-huh. they'll just be... You know, it's interesting... 
this when I put this podcast up online, there's a little box you have to tick that decides whether it's expl- it has explicit material, like a rated R kind mm. of thing, like mm-hmm. they do with the movies, like mm-hmm. the Hollywood movies, sure. they do with that. And it's not that anything we're talking about, we, you know, we're not dropping the F bomb or anything really here. It, but I did, I did say it was explicit. Certainly not. Because the kind of, you know, information we're giving out, you know, is guaranteed to work and get you laid. So it's kind of like legally has to be for over 18s mm-hmm, mm-hmm. just because it's so tried and true. Yeah. It's sophisticated man yeah. talking about sophisticated ideas mm-hmm. such as who came up with the rolled off guitar tone for Stephen Stills or George exactly. Harrison. Exactly. Yeah. This is important. This is important stuff to talk about. I mean, it's cutting Even if edge. you don't like music. Even if you, no, I'm telling you, this important cutting stuff. edge stuff that needs to be figured out. And Once and for all. Seriously. It's very serious. Because music is very serious. I kind of think of, our, I like you put that explicit thing, because I always kind of thought our podcast was kind of the Quentin Tarantino of pods. Of podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. I like agree. We're kind of like. Kind of a. No like, rules, kind of, you know, controversial. Yeah, kind of like, or even more so, kind of like, um, I just think of me and you as De Niro and Pacino in that scene in Heat, where it's like. <laughs> yeah. I, you, uh, like, I, well, I'm in my version of it, I'm De Niro. But, and I'm kind of like, listen, if I'm going to make a move, you know, it's like basically if I'm going to do a bit, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You have to be ready to drop everything. And then I'm like, and likewise, if you see me, yeah. If you you see me making, like I'm seeing you, you, yeah, then you better be ready to, to, in the same sense. Exactly. And that's, and, and then I'll take Pacino. That's fine. Okay. Yeah. He lives at the end. It's true. Imagine Sorry. if I, and that's, uh, Prem- he wins. Sort of, he wins in the end, James. He, he's the cops always win, Johnny. The knocks always win, and that's why I'm out here. I'm an outlaw. I'm McNulty, and that, again, that's why I am McNulty. Yeah, because he's kind of he's not really a cop, is he? Uh, they both kind of play by the rules and do work. Everyone's flawed, right? In that show, in the wire, every yeah. every character is they're flawed. Everyone has a good side and a and a bad side. Yeah, kind of like such is life. Yeah. You Everybody know. tells the whole story that shows. It really does. It's kind of an Oedipal thing, I think. <laughs> Something. Well, Oedip- McNulty certainly has some some dad Demons, issues, some daddy issues that they don't address in the show, like maybe, Christine McVie. Maybe if they'd done a, a season six. Yeah. Did you ever? Watch, I can't watch the one about the kids, man. It makes oh, me sad. I've seen it twice, but yeah. I don't. We'll see how far we get on this third rewatch I've been doing. So far, it led me astray by thinking I could drink Jameson, a shot of Jameson with every beer I drink like I'm a longshoreman. No, the longshoreman. I paid the price for that the other night. Frank Sabotka? <laughs> yeah. I'll You're a bit more of a Frank Sabotka. Frank Sabotka. That's type. Mike. Yeah, Mike is Frank Sabotka. Yeah, miss that guy. Got him, get him on here to do like a, I don't know, like an, old, an Allman Brothers record. He, I call Mike. Nugent. Nugent. Yeah, can, yeah, Nugent double, Gonzo double Gonzo, live. Yeah. That'd be great. Yeah. I, I called Mike today and I really, talk about a soothing voice. I was driving out to pick up uh, my nephew and uh, he, Mike, I got Mike on the phone just to tell me about NHL free agency. Certainly. And I just let him talk for about 20 minutes. He broke down the salary cap mm-hmm. issues, the Canucks have everything. And it was just, I felt like I was listening to the sports talk radio and it was just wonderful miss him we'll get him oh we're we've got like i don't know we got like we're like what do we do 40 we're gonna go do about 12 minutes more oh wonderful yeah That's great stuff i mean spencer would you grab me a beer look at this johnny's nephew's here and he's making him get him beers <laughs> out of the fridge it's like well, room I'm, and board i'm working here you're working yeah <laughs> um yeah I mean, we were gonna. We were gonna. This is how professional our podcast is. We were gonna get my nephew Spencer to be on the podcast today, but we don't have a third microphone. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And uh, thanks, Alex, for lending us all the equipment to do it. Too. Yeah, exactly. It's great stuff. I mean, yeah. we're as we've said many times, we're not looking to win any awards on content, but we are looking to win some technical awards. Certainly, and that's something as musicians that we can safely say. We're branching into because at our age, you know, it's time really to give up on being a musician and just like find a job within it that hopefully isn't the bottom of the ladder would be working along a McQuaid. Yes. Like, and the top of the ladder would be like, I don't know, being an engineer or kind of like a studio like monkey, like to help out. 
top of the ladder? Yeah, it's about the best we can hope for. Oh, I mean, right, as long right. as Serb exists. I think this is better than that. Being like a music historian. That's what you I do saying. think of myself as a music historian. You sent me a text the other day that I thought was amazing that you were like, look, man, music is dead. Everything <laughs> is fucked. All I care about is now is being a music historian. Yeah. And I thought that I was like, there's honor in that. Yeah, I do think I actually do uh, think of myself as a music historian. Actually, that is what we're uh, sub genre of podcast is. It's not comedy. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not music. History. It's music historian. Yeah, it's it's it history. Is. It's 100%. a history podcast. You're listening to An Impossible Way of Life, a new history podcast. Yeah. Tracing the roots of classic rock through mm-hmm. the ages. Mm-hmm. Starting with maybe like... Well, we're dropping facts on here that people have never heard before. No one's ever thought about this like stuff before. Like how the Beatles didn't have Fender guitars. Like no one's ever... You know, everyone assumes... Everyone assumes that that they, they, they see were George- deciding to use Hofners yeah. and Voxes. Mm-hmm. No, it was out of... They, you know, you think the Beatles, oh, you know, they've got everything. Yeah, They're the biggest band in the world. Actually, no. They were very limited in their technology. Certainly. And they still managed to make those great albums. It's incredible. It's just incredible. If you think about it. It's incredible if you think about it. So on this Beatles-y day, the most Beatles record being Hard Day's Night, Rubber Soul being the record that the Beatles became the Beatles on. The worst album? No, it's not. It used to be my favorite. Besides Yellow Submarine, don't talk about Yellow Submarine like it's it's a... like a song or an album. No, the album. It's not an album. It's not an album. I'm never going <clears> to <throat> say that. What's worse than Rubber Soul? Let With... It Be. Eh, not, not bad, but I love Let It Be. I love the the live stuff. Like that it showcases them as a live band. Like yeah. the side two starting off with I've Got a Feeling, One After 909. Like You can't have the Spectre version of it. I like the Spectre version. Yeah. I, I mean, there's some duds on there for sure. But I mean, all the rooftop stuff that's not no overdubs, that they're playing it in the cold and No January. overdubs. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that stuff's fucking awesome, dude. What a band. You know, it, it was... It's, Fender Twin. Ooh. Shit. <laughs> it's it. 1971, man. It's, oh, they got the twins. Stills had already it. spoke to him. Deja Vu's out. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You're, and Band on the Run's like 72 or something. Right. Anyway. Yeah, exactly. He's in, and he's okay, in, he's so, in, sorry, fuck, I, he's in a, fucking Africa. I thought it was later. He's but, in Africa. Yeah, I thought it was later. Yeah. He's, he's getting robbed in Africa. He's mm-hmm. dead. He's already been dead for three years by that point, Paul McCartney. Paul, yeah. You know, so, yeah. like, by the time Stephen Stills lent him, that's interesting, actually. Uh huh. So, well, a good question would be who's a better bass player, Paul McCartney or the guy who replaced him Paul when he McCartney. died? That's interesting. Because then you got Abbey Road and you got. Abbey Let Road's it, his, maybe his best bass player. The bass, bass playing's great it, yeah, on that. Is, so, like, yeah. who's better, Paul or, like, or the Paul replacement two. Paul? Paul McCartney, yeah. too. Yeah. That's interesting. And not I, the album. I don't hear a lot of people talk about this. Not the album, Paul McCartney, too. No. No, no, not the album, which was also by McCartney Paul, too. That could be a message, a, yeah. s- a sign. Yeah, maybe that was why it was called. When that. did he die again? Of Sergeant Pepper's before? No, it's the Abbey Road cover. He's dead, right? Like he's only got one shoe on or something. Oh, right. No, but I thought he died before that. I thought he died around sixty-seven or something. I thought it was the, that was the, just that was a clue that he that he already the, was dead. Was the, was that? Yeah. How come no? No, one, it says on Strawberry Fields Forever, Paul is dead. You know the Beatles for sale cover? Mm-hmm. Is that the no? It's not that one. Which is the one where they're shadowy? Uh oh, help! No, that's the four of them. Yeah, in pants. Shadows suits. there. Oh. No, the four, the iconic photo. Oh, oh, with the Beatles. Yeah, that's the Have worst. You, and you're gonna say that? No, I was gonna. Well, no, I was gonna say that you. It's also in the tree on John Wesley Harding. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. another like another Beatles conspiracy. That That's another thing to dead. say to people to yeah. seem cool. Yeah, definitely. Like yeah. just say that, and then you say right after you say, "Oh, and by the way, I have a butcher cover of yesterday and today." You sure. just say that. Yeah, yeah I yeah. have one. Like yeah. I'll never sell it, but no, I have. But it. I have one. Yeah, you don't even get to see it. Yeah. I'll if show you it. Much, if you want to come back to my place later, sure. I could show it to we you. We could listen to records. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We could listen to re- like oh, I, have I have an original I have, Butcher I cover. Have. I peeled it. I peeled it myself. Yeah. I also I'm really meticulously into, peeled it with a heat gun. I'm also into peeling 
covers just generally and have the Velvet Underground album with a peely banana Mm -hmm. on it too. Mm -hmm. The Warhol. That's just me though. Yeah. 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 You know, that kind of guy, other than just spending all this time getting laid, because how could you not? is the kind of guy who's going to try and buy one of the 1,000 copies, 180 gram vinyl of the 1974 Crosby, Zills and Nash and Young Doom Tour DVD collection? DVD and um, weighted vinyl. Yeah, there's only 1,000 copies Are you copies talking of about it. the DVD collection that they cobbled together from horrible... <laughs> Yeah. Well, they were too busy watching the Nixon shit to focus on rehearsing. That they had that there were no good salvageable shows, video or audio, and they because, spent, well, it's because Stephen Stills hadn't yet invented the like the Normo Dome style stadium right, TVs because yeah. he invented that. Yeah. It quote unquote. Mm-hmm. He, this he is we got to save this because the Doom Tour just. Uh, so I want to do a knows, special. We're gonna like, do a. It'll be a, a special. special. It'll be an Impossible Way of Life special. We show. might even make it like an, a paywall thing to try and make some money. Yeah, well, cats like, out of the bag, guys. You know what? No, like that might be a good way to do it. Like to be like our first paywall thing is like a one-hour special on like a kind of because I kind of almost like at this point think of myself as a sort of an investigator. Yeah. Kind of a musical, you know, that I guy who said that in that yeah. English accent, you know, the guy who, um, is always on every rock documentary, rockumentary, if you will. Yeah. Who's like he's the got Rolling like Stone guy. No, yeah. he's like the glasses, long oh. hair, looks like Thurston Moore, kind of mm-hmm. like that era. I kind of think of myself as him, but like a digital version, you know, he's on every, he's like, Oh, he knows everything about everyone. Uh-huh. You know, that guy. I'm him. Well, I think that'd he be great. He looks like a, a Seattle grunge guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be great uh, if we could possibly earn enough money to purchase that Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young DVD collection. Uh, I know for a fact that they made a thousand of them because I've been doing some investigative work. And... There's still some left, and this has been out for years, which gives you a suggestion of how many people wanted to buy this thing. And David Crosby is selling them from his own website, davidcrosby.com. He's just got like yeah, boxes he's got a, of yeah. them in his house. In his house on Blue Jay Way. Yeah. yeah. And he's selling them for $500 a piece. Wow. Well, so, they're collector's items now. I fucking want one so bad. Yeah. I really do. Well, you heard it here, folks. We're all about uh, the customer's always right on our podcast. And if you tell us that you want it, that you want to hear... My friend James and I talk for an hour about the Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young 1974 Doom Tour, uh, self-proclaimed Doom Tour, and you let us know... And uh, you give us the money, and if we will buy the DVD collection. And off David Crosby himself. Off David Crosby Hell, himself. Hell, he might and, even fucking and, be on it at this point. He's on Twitter. He's on Twitter all the time. I'm going to tweet him right now what Triad was about. Ask him what Triad. If it's about two girls and a guy. Yeah. Or two or guys and a guys. girl. Or three guys. Yeah. Or three girls. Yeah. yeah. Well, it couldn't be that, because no, he's, he's talking involved. about himself. He's involved. Yeah. He is involved. Yeah. I mean, but anyway, we will we we will not hesitate oh, we to won't. break it down. I'll establish a perimeter. I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to find out what happened on that tour and it this on is that tour, God's yeah. honest truth. Um, you know, we need the DVD collection to really know what happened, but we won't let you down. So we're at like 58 minutes and 47 seconds. I just think psychologically I want to hit an hour every time. Because you get an eight, like, looks. This is kind of like an OCD kind no, of thing? No, it's, I'm not OCD about it at all. It just looks better. It looks like you always make the effort oh, to see. get there. Yeah. So when people see it, they know. <laughs> we're really making the effort right now. That's you know what I mean, though? It, like, it looks... It Champagne looks of beers. Miller High Life. Miller High Life. Couldn't uh, get it up here for the longest time. We'd love a sponsorship, wouldn't we? Yeah, we would. I mean, I'd like, I'd like to, you know, the old chestnut, the kind of sports interaction. We go no, by we, we, where the winners fuck win. That up by stop talking about sports. Didn't yeah, I? but you can gamble. You can you can bet on on like which one of the Beatles 
has the best guitar style. Yeah. You can bet on anything on that. Which Bruce Springsteen song Trump will use in his next rally or something. Yeah. You can bet on that. You can bet on um, which, which be- Dylan record after the 1980s is the worst. <laughs> Those questions I met, I found a bunch of other ones after. It was like, who's the funniest Beatle? And it was just, like, it was just John. Like, just the, the answers they there. They chose John. They know. It's clearly, he's not the funniest. Google Beatle. knows somehow the answers to all these really hard questions that you would only know if you knew the men in the band. But well, they, Google knows. Those guys probably do know. I mean, watch this. Look at this. Hey, Google, who is the best guitar player in the Beatles? Paul McCartney. Here's a summary from the website guitarworld.com. Paul McCartney is probably best known for his creative, melodic Beatles and Wings bass lines. But he's always been a guitarist at heart. The guitar was, after all, his first instrument, and it's always been Can you make it stop? How does it stop? <laughs> That's what they do? That's, she's wrong. Yeah, damn right This she's is wrong. why women shouldn't talk about music. Okay. 